Hey friends, it's uh, Friday, um, the 2nd of September. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we're into the month of September now. Um, fall is right around the corner. It doesn't feel like it, uh, but it is nearby. And, um, and, and we move towards that. Uh, we are in the series, we are in a, a series of psalms, or at least a, a grouping of psalms that have something to teach us about what it means to be faithful followers, faithful people of God, and in our context, faithful followers of Christ, in times when um, when things are difficult, when things are not uh, as we would int- uh, as we would hope they would be, um, you know, there's so much of the biblical history is played out uh, in the themes of war, in the themes of warfare, and and conquering and being conquered and exile and return from exile and building and destroying and all of those things um you know and we don't we don't have that sort of existence today where we live uh but we do have 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 metaphorical trials and medical metaphorical um seasons of warfare and all of those things so we have to it, it's not a clean and perfect transfer um, but that's sort of how we have to think of these things um, I want to read Psalm 75 for us and then have a few comments about uh, about all of that Psalm 75 says this we praise you God we praise you for your name is near people tell of your wonderful deeds You say, I choose the appointed time. It is I who judge with equity. When the earth and all its people quake, it is I who holds its pillars firm. To the arrogant I say, boast no more. And to the wicked, do not lift up your horns. Do not lift your horns against heaven. Do not speak so defiantly. No one from the east or the west or from the desert can exalt themselves. It is God who judges. He brings one down, he exalts another. In the hand of the Lord is a cup full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours it out, and all the wicked of the earth drink it down to its very dregs. As for me, I will declare this forever. I will sing praise to the God of Jacob who says, I will cut off the horns of all the wicked, but the horns of the righteous will be lifted up. Um, So there is this category of people called the wicked and just as in we you know just as we saw way back at the very beginning of the psalms in psalm 1 uh, the righteous are seen as the people who are living for the purposes of God and the wicked are seen as the people who are choosing other ways and in in the the life of faith we recognize that there is a tension between these between the righteous and the wicked um, but we also, as we've said several times, we also see that there's a tension between righteousness and wickedness in those definitions um, in our own lives. None of us are purely one or the other. Uh, we are sinners and we are saints, as uh, the creeds would tell us. Uh, and so when we talk about the wicked drinking down the, the very dregs, this, this image, by the way, of the, the cup of the Lord, that's, a, that's an image of, of God's justice, of God's judgment, of even God's wrath. The, the, God hates that which is counter, that which keeps people from the fullness of life. God hates uh, that which would separate us from life, uh, life with God. He hates that. And so in the end, he will judge those things. He will, he will pour out his wrath upon those things. And the, the, uh, the image of a cup filled with God's foaming, what is it, foaming wine mixed with spices, that's an image of God's wrath. And the wicked will pour it down. But then, get back to my main point, we all have unrighteousness in us that needs to be dealt with, that needs to be judged. You can't cleanse something unless you judge it. You can't cleanse it unless you identify what it is and so we see that that's for us as well that's a that's a humbling humbling thing it should be uh, we are not arrogant we shouldn't be we are sometimes but we shouldn't be arrogant uh, about our faith our faith should make us the most humble people um, let's say more about that of course now there's a another term I just want to put it in front of you and the word is eschatology eschatological reality eschatology is a big term and it conjures up all sorts of scary images and fanciful images because a lot of the books 
a lot of the apocalyptical books about the end, the end of all things, or the end times, uh, as people often say, um, is is incredibly metaphorical, and it uses images and and ideas, and and you have to use your imagination. There's so much to be said about that. Um, but when we look at a psalm like this, and we say God will judge and declare forever righteousness and wickedness and judge and bring about the fullness of things. Um, we're talking about an eschatological reality. In the end, there will be a day, I shouldn't even say in the end, in a way, because in a way it's really the beginning, but there will be a time, a, a, a chronos time, will be a kairos time, uh, in which this comes about. And we look towards that. Jesus will come again and set all things right. And we look towards that, and that's, in a sense, what this psalm is declaring. There will be a day when this all comes. But the invitation, here's the point, the invitation to us is to live today as though that's true. <laughs> to live today as though the eschatological reality of God's perfect reign is here now. It's not. We know that. The world's broken. We see it all the time. But we live as though it is true and we also live uh, into the purposes that would make it true, right? So we, 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 we treat one another um, as though we're all children of God. And we work for the things that are according to God's fullness, the fullness that God would have for all of humanity. And, and, and again, there's so much we can say there. So it's a little psalm, but it, but, but, but it carries a wide variety of implications and draws us into something much deeper um, than the reality we often live within ourselves. All right, there's a lot there. Let's uh, pray. Let's take a moment to pray. Uh, Lord, we thank you that you're big. You're big. You are bigger than we realize and we know. You have purposes that are beyond our understanding. Uh, your, your, your love and your grace and your hope give us new life and new meaning and, and, and purpose. And Lord, as we live today, help us to live as though your promised end is true. Help us to live as people who, who, who have been saved and who have been redeemed and who are, are declared to be righteous. Help us to not be arrogant by any means about that, but help us in humble gratitude to live out our lives according to your, your purposes. Let, let us not uh, fear the day ahead, but let us put our trust in you, that though there are hard things in this world, broken things, uh, we can live with the knowledge that you're dealing with it. Friends, I invite you to take a moment to lift up your individual prayers. Lord, hear what we would bring to you today. So God, surround us with your grace. Surround us with your mercy. Fill us with the passions that are after your heart. That today we would live, uh, that we would live lives full of joy, full of meaning and purpose, and, and with an awareness of all your many blessings. Lord, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends, have a great weekend. Good to be with you throughout the week. Hope these uh, times of prayer are meaningful to you. Um, trust that they are. And uh, we'll, see you, we'll see you soon. God bless.